Thank you. It's, um, it's slightly unnerving to hear your son described by someone else as, as your seed, but I accept it. <laughs> and I have to say, um, part of what I love about Seeds of Peace is that it's a form of multiculturalism at its best. It shows that multiculturalism has advanced since the time of when I was a kid growing up in New Jersey. And uh, we didn't have Seeds of Peace. We had to walk to school. <laughs> there was summer camp, though, if you were lucky, and I was lucky. And, and my experience, too, was multicultural for its time at, at Camp Mordechai Runamuk. <laughs> um, multiculturalism at, at, at said camp meant that you would have color war with Jewish kids playing for a team called the People's Republic of China, <laughs> eating a form of mystery meats called, I swear to God, the Taste of Vienna. <laughs> and then at night, we would retire in a cabin called Bunk Iroquois. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, <laughs> and until you have seen the sons and daughters of, um, of accountants and and dentists, all dressed up as crazy horse, you've really not experienced multiculturalism <laughs> at its finest. But as I say, things, thanks to the Wallachs, thanks to everybody at Seeds of Peace, things have advanced enormously in terms of the uh, opportunities that young people have. Unfortunately, few young people, considering how many people want to be involved, since then. The idea of Seeds of Peace is the idea of civil society itself played out on an international plane. Civil society is not the state. It's not the market. It's not the private world of the family. Civil society is the voluntary realm of shared interests. Invol involvement in civil society demands personal involvement in our common life, involvement in schools, in churches, in mosques, in synagogues, involvement in charities and in human rights groups, community groups, coalitions, involvement in the social and political fabric of our world. Civil society is the tensile strength of all liberal democracies. And civil society is what Tocqueville saw as the unique vitality of American life even two centuries ago. And it is what men and women of democratic principles and aspirations engage in often under terrible dis uh, duress and threat from Beijing to Moscow and from Damascus to Lahore. Nowhere is it better expressed than in the sight of hundreds of Afghan children, thousands of Afghan children, lining up for a slim one in a hundred at best chance of participating in Seeds of Peace. Seeds of Peace is civil society and on the international plane, a voluntary group that seeks to bring together kids from seemingly oppose societies. It hopes to give them a means and a language of exchange. It encourages empathy and listening. It encourages precisely not what they hear in the ignorant pieties of their elders in the low and high offices of politics so often, and religion, and even education. It suspends certainty in favor of exchange. It does not ask kids to forego their own histories or cultures, but rather to learn from each other. In fact, Seeds is about turning other people, the great scary other, into human beings one person at a time. It's about learning to talk about, across great gulfs of language, culture, and politics. Uh, I've been a reporter for a long time and traveled a bit, and it's striking to me almost everywhere I go how much the seeds of conflict, truly stubborn, bloody conflict, is rooted in the rock-hard soil of a differing sense of history. It's been my experience, and I'm sure yours, when you talk with Palestinians in Gaza, say, about the events of 1947 or 1948, you get one version of history that's absolutely diametrically and stubbornly opposed to the same version of history as if you talk to the Jews of West Jerusalem. And this is very much the same when you discuss, say, the history of Kashmir, when you are talking to people in Delhi, and later when you're talking to someone in Karachi. And the same can be said of the history of Nanjing, 
the Second World War when you are speaking to Chinese in Beijing and then Japanese in Tokyo. We are all of us prone to the easy inheritance of national and tribal histories, and we look beyond them, question them all too rarely. Not so long ago, for a Jew in Israel or even here to acknowledge the expulsion of Palestinians in 1948 was a radical act. Just as it was a radical act for a Palestinian minister named Sari Nuseba to denounce terrorism as a means of liberation. Seeds of Peace is not the only organization trying to bridge those gulfs of understanding and history, but it's among the very best I know. When my own son came home from Seeds of Peace last summer, just a few weeks after the, being in the comfort zone of his life in Manhattan with his custom friends, you could easily sense the subtle change in him, the new sense of questioning, the new curiosity about somebody else's history, the eagerness to learn from all angles, the eagerness to resolve conflict without, uh, without rancor. I'd like to think that a young kid from Israel who becomes a minister in a future government and was in seeds of peace would, re would, would not be for the refusal of a scholar like Noam Chomsky to the land of Israel. I'd like to think that a young kid with experience in seeds of peace would, who would grow up to be a minister in Palestine would refuse to publish textbooks that portray Jews as they are portrayed in the protocols of the elders of Zion. That kind of experience, that kind of growth experience is essential to all of us. You've all been inflicted, or you will be inflicted, I think, on the way out of here with a book that is the size of, of a shoebox. It's called The Bridge, and it's by um, the recipient of this uh, honor that I've gotten tonight. I have to say, <laughs> a humanitarian honor. It's like the Gene Hirshhorn uh, honor at, at the Academy of Awards, ill-deserved by me. But I will say that the, one of the parts of researching Barack Obama that was so interesting to me is the education that he received, the multicultural education that he received as a college student who refused to sit at the designated ethnic table designated for him, who hung out with Pakistani kids, Indian kids, black kids, and white kids, helping to form his sensibility. And after graduation from college, instead of following the easy flow of the, of the early and mid 80s um, into, the, into the obvious professions and jobs, he chose instead to go into community organizing um, at the princely sum of $15,000 a year. And a lot of people, including Sarah Palin and, and Rudy Giuliani, have been pretty nasty about community organizing, and they've also been pretty ignorant about it. What Obama did was spend countless hours in another kind of act of civil society, talking and working with the dispossessed in an area thick with crime, with unemployment, and with poverty. He was a middle class kid with, thanks to the civil rights movement, pretty easy access to the elite institutions of American life, Punahou School, um, Occidental, Columbia University. But instead of doing the easy thing, the immediate thing, he met with single mothers who couldn't make ends meet, or protect their kids from drugs and crime. He worked with pastors and priests who were trying to help parishioners with AIDS and alcoholism and a hundred other problems. He worked with residents of housing projects who lived in buildings where asbestos threatened their health and the city could not have cared less. In the end, Obama, the community organizer, probably gained more from the experience than the community did. And that is possible um, with our kids in seats of peace as well, and that's fine. The victories are small and they are rare, whether it's in community organizing or in seats of peace. But it's an education in many things. An education in Obama's case that turned out to be a powerful influence on a future president and obviously someone who has affected all of our lives and will for the next couple of years or maybe even the next six years. Seeds of Peace is a parallel apprenticeship in civil society and potentially no less powerful than the experience that Obama had as a young man. It would not surprise me a bit, and it would thrill all of us, I think, if some of our future politicians and business leaders and writers, writers and artists, people in all fields, gained at least some of their understanding of the complexity of the world 
with an experience early in their lives like seeds of peace. Here in the United States, in the Middle East, in South Asia, and wherever it is needed, which is precisely everywhere. We should be so lucky to see that happen, and I dearly hope we will. Thank you.